Greetings, welcome to the shop. For today's video, we're going to take a look at a water sensor. This is from Adafruit. Uh, I've found that their products are very good. Uh, we'll take a look at it here on the workbench real quick. Very simple circuit board. Uh, they give you a couple mounting holes up here. The electronics are at the, presumably the top of it. It'll most probably be used in a vertical orientation. The sensors are down here. They're exposed traces, and I'm sure it's just detecting current uh, between these traces. Uh, nothing on the back other than the the phrase water sensor makes it pretty pretty obvious what it is. It is not an analog device. You might get an analog output from it, um, but Adafruit mentions that it should be treated as a digital uh, device, and I did some experimentation, and I fully agree. Uh, it's not really an analog device at all. So we will treat this as a switch that is water activated. Uh, here on the uh, Fritzing diagram, wiring could not be simpler. Um, we've got our signal. I'm using a white wire. Comes back to pin number 16. Red wire comes back to the Pico's 3.3 volt output and then ground back up to the sensor uh, from the Pico. The code, uh, again, all this is is a switch, so we're looking for an on or an off. We're going to import the machine library and time. We're going to create an object called water. That'll be our switch, and that'll be on uh, GPIO uh, 16. Obviously, you can use whatever you want. And we want to pull down that signal. The device is zero volts when dry, so we want to pull it down to that because the device will then uh, uh, pr provide an output voltage, a positive voltage, that would override the pull-down resistor. And that's how you kind of choose when you do a pull-down or a pull-up. In this case, dry is zero volts, and we would pull down. We want that to be our base uh, voltage. And then when the device is activated, it'll output a positive voltage, thus pulling uh, the pull-down resistor up and to a positive voltage that we can see on that digital input. Uh, coming down here, we're in our endless loop like you would have in any microcontroller program. We're going to check to see if that switch, water dot value, is equal to 1, meaning it's high. If it is high, it is wet. So we'll print out the word wet. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we check it and a signal is low, we'll print out the word dry. So we'll go ahead uh, and run it. Like I say, this could not be simpler. Oh, and I got a one second sleep in here uh, just to slow things down so it isn't printing really, really fast down below. So we'll run it dry, dry, dry. And if we're looking at it here on the board, we can see that it's very dry. I'm gonna touch it. I don't have enough uh, humidity uh, sweat, we'll say, on it, on myself to activate it. So we'll bring in some water. I got a tiny little tray of water here, and I'm going to present the uh, sensor in rather vertical to start with. And I'm just breaking the water right now. We're not seeing anything. So I'm going to tilt it down, and as soon as it gets fairly wet, I'm about a half inch in, about 13 millimeters, and it's plenty wet, and it's now sensing wet and letting us know. Now, of course, in your uh, practical application, you'd want it to do more than just print wet. Um, so you, as in probably the way I'm going to use this, we're going to use this to detect water and alert us of something. And I'll have a future video on that, on how we'll take this sensor and create an alarm that can hopefully message us on uh, our cell phones. So that's coming up. That's uh, right now just in the planning stages, but I hope to be working on it soon. Uh, so now I'm gonna pull it out of the water and it pretty quickly goes back to sensing dry. So it is very responsive. I'm gonna wipe it off. Now I want to see how it behaves, uh, not in a puddle of water, uh, but how about if we have some absorbent material that can take on water and uh, spread across the sensor. And that way we could detect 
uh, things before it gets deep enough to be a puddle or deep water. So I've got that. Um, I'm going to try to get a little more water on that. Ooh, that was a little more than I planned on. And so we will just put this in between these uh, napkins that are very wet. And I will lay it on there. And immediately it's sensing wet. Uh, so I'm going to pull this out till it's just in a little ways. And it's still showing wet. So the sensor is very uh, capable of detecting uh, a small amount of moisture, water, uh, but it doesn't appear to be able to sense humidity. So that works out really good for uh, an application such as we just described. And that pretty well sums up this sensor. Uh, simple, effective, uh, seemingly reliable, uh, doesn't seem to want to over-report or under-report. Uh, so all around looks to me like a real winner, and I'm really looking forward to working on that project where I utilize this sensor. Uh, you may be wondering, well, how much does it cost? Uh, this device is $1.95, and that price is uh, on uh, New Year's Eve on, of 2022, so uh, December 31st, 2022. Uh, but again, very simple, $1.95 can't go wrong. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.